You're watching NFL Daily by Chat Sports. I am Harrison Graham alongside Chase Sr. Day one of free agency has been pretty busy, and now we're going to recap every single move that has happened during this legal tampering period, a.k.a. when all the deals start to come through here on Monday. But before that, we're going to get you caught up on the latest on Deshaun Watson. What does his uh, potential future look like? Aaron Wilson uh, on the heels of a John McClain report reports this. Deshaun Watson going to meet with on Monday night, the Saints and the Panthers, who are considered the two front runners right now for a blockbuster trade. This from Josina Anderson as well. I'm told Deshaun Watson is set to meet with the Saints and Panthers on Monday evening. I'm also told Watson is currently uh, pleasing, uh, planning to meet with more teams tomorrow at this time per league source. Aaron Wilson with these details as well. And a third note here, uh, he has apparently rejected the Seahawks. So right now the focus is the Saints and the Carolina Panthers. And then a final note, the Indianapolis Colts were interested, but being in the same di division, the Colts have uh, declined to allow the Colts to meet with Watson. For good reason, Chase, they don't want to trade him within the division. So right now, New Orleans, Carolina appear to be the front runners. potentially more meetings tomorrow. Uh, what are your takeaways? What are your thoughts on uh, how the Watson thing sits right now? Yeah, a couple of things. Personally, I view Deshaun Watson as the third best quarterback when he's on the field behind Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen. That might be lofty praise, but I look at what he did two years ago and what he's done throughout his NFL career. He's a special player. Very good arm strength. Very good athlete when he needs to rely on his legs, which he doesn't always need to rely on his mobility. He's able to pick up first downs and really be an elite dual threat quarterback. But as a passer, he's exceptional. On a bad Texans team two years ago, threw for almost 5,000 yards and has been terrific throughout his NFL career. He's also a bona fide winner, making it to two national championships and winning one with Clemson. As for his destinations, a lot of people are like, why would you reject the Seattle Seahawks when you have Noah Fant, DK Metcalf, Tyler, um, Tyler Lockett. Lockett. Well, you know, for a couple of reasons. One, defensive-minded head coach in Pete Carroll, who's older, and the defense has been porous the last few years. Yep. The division in the NFC West is also an absolute gauntlet. Defending Super Bowl champions in the Los Angeles Rams, a Final Four team in San Francisco, and the upstart Arizona Cardinals, who are led by Kyler Murray. You go to the NFC South, really all you have to worry about is Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So the division in the NFC South is a lot easier. Plus, in New Orleans, you have a couple of really good weapons. Michael Thomas, Traquan Smith, Marquez Calloway, Alvin Kamara. On the Panthers, you could have DJ Moore. Christian McCaffrey, yep. as well as Robbie Anderson. Like, those are legitimate weapons that Watson could go to in an easier division. The sweepstakes, they're crazy right now because teams across the NFL realize this guy is a special, special talent, and I'm fascinated to see how it plays out. So, yeah, just quick reminder, he will meet with the Saints and the Panthers tonight, potentially more teams tomorrow on yep. Tuesday, so stay tuned. Who will trade for Watson? Will it be one of those two teams? Will someone else get into the mix? Let us know in the comments. I will predict right now that he's going to go to the Saints. I think you're in the Carolina camp right more now. More so Carolina for me. So yeah. we'll see what happens. A little get bit your, more financial flexibility. Get your predictions in. Who will trade for Deshaun Watson? Now, after the Deshaun Watson details uh, right there for you guys, let's get you caught up on all of the moves that have happened during day one of free agency in terms of contracts. Here we go. We'll get things kicked off. We'll kind of go... You know, rapid fire and focus on some certain guys here. Emmanuel Ogba, four years, 65 to stay with Miami. Joe Noteboom, three years, 40 million. Uh, looks like the replacement for Andrew Whitworth long term. Alex Kappa to help protect Joe Burrow. Jeff Swaim on a cheap one-year deal. What stands out here, Chase? Miami Dolphins being very aggressive as evidenced by all the moves that we're about to break down. And then some of the young teams in the NFL prioritizing, protecting, and building around their young quarterbacks. In this case, it's Alex Kappa going to Cincinnati to protect Joe Burrow. They needed to bulk up that offensive line. You mentioned Miami being aggressive. They go out and get Chase Edmonds as well. Two years, $12.6 million. I think he's an interesting player at running back in Mike McDaniel's offense. I think he frees up some stuff vertically for Jalen Waddell, for James Conner. Best value deal last year outside of quarterbacks. Led the NFL in touchdowns. Pittsburgh is moving forward with Mitchell Trubisky. I want to see what the contract details are. They go this route instead of Jimmy Garoppolo. Mitchell Trubisky is going to be a lot cheaper. And then Larry Ogunjobi, one of the best interior defensive linemen on the free agency class. Arguably the best defensive tackle that was available. 
Uh, he's your Akeem Hicks replacement in that 4-3 scheme as a three technique, seven sacks a year ago. I think it's a good move to fit in Matt Eberflus' defense. Uh, Seattle brings a couple of guys back, a few others as well, which we'll outline. Quandre Diggs, one of the bigger contracts of the day, Chase, three years and $40 million. It's a lot, and it's a lot of money for a guy who's coming off a pretty serious injury. Al Woods also going back to Seattle. Going back to my original point, Brandon Scherf going to Jacksonville, Miami, Jacksonville, two teams in Florida that are being aggressive, Spending. and for Jacksonville, really trying to protect Trevor Lawrence and take advantage of him being on that rookie contract. Ted Cars looks like he's going to be the starting center in Cincinnati. That's big, too. He gets three years and $18 million. What has the best signing been on day one of NFL Free Agency? Let us know what you guys think. We'll give our thoughts. I've got a name to keep an eye on in just a moment, so stay tuned for that. But if you have a strong opinion, give us your best signing on day one of NFL Free Agency. A couple of deals here as well. Trace Walker, three years, $25 million to Detroit. They've largely been quiet. The Giants have been as well. They have signed Robert Foster, who's kind of a depth wide receiver. A couple more deals for Jacksonville also chase yeah jacksonville look doug peterson trent balky they're trying to rebuild the culture they're trying to get back to winning ways in jacksonville this is a franchise that's coming off the disastrous urban meyer tenure and with doug peterson super bowl winning head coach with trent balky a lot of success with jim harbaugh in san francisco they understand what it takes to compete for playoff spots and be a competitive franchise their spending spree that's what they're backing it up with Next up is Lakin Tomlinson. I like this move to the Jets. They poach him from San Francisco. Sidney Jones, one year, $3.6 million, a couple of signings in Tennessee. But Tomlinson gets paid for his consistency over the last handful of years, Chase. Good protector for Zach Wilson. The 49ers traded a fifth-round pick for Lakin Tomlinson, and since that point, he started all 80 games for the 49ers franchise, not including starting every postseason game. $13 million per year. They just couldn't afford him. Then you look at value deals. I think Sidney Jones staying with Seattle, pretty good value deal here. Make sure to follow us on Rumble. It's another uh, video content creator app that we have uh, partnered up with. Unfiltered access to us, uncensored, more NFL news, rumors, free agency. We've been live on Rumble today as well for day one of free agency. That will continue. All of our content will be published there, plus some occasional exclusive content. So if you want to maximize your viewing of us here at Chat Sports, be sure to follow us, rumble.com slash NFL Daily, and go check out some of their other content creators as well. They are growing very, very quickly. Some more signings to keep in mind here. Uh, Matthew Slater, uh, a longtime specialist. He's back with the Patriots uh, on a one-year deal. Braxton Berrios gets two years and $12 million for the Jets. The Cowboys have brought back their long snapper, and that is it, Chase. Braxton Berrios, an all-pro returner who can play in the slot. You can use him as a gadget guy. $6 million per year for him. That's pretty solid. And Matthew Slater, he's had one of the more intriguing and fascinating and wild careers of anybody in NFL history. Purely a specialist, but he's the best at what he does, yes, and that's sir. why he keeps playing. No doubt. Uh, keep it coming here. Christian Kirk, one of the ones that caught headlines, Chase. Four years, $72 million can get up to $84 million in incentives. And if that's the case, that's $21 million per year for a guy who only has four 100-yard receiving games throughout his career. I like him. He's a good gadget guy. He's got speed. He's a burner. He can take the top off of the defense. I think his route tree is limited, and I think he also is somewhat of a gadget guy, and he's not a number one wide receiver, but Jacksonville is paying him as such. Also, in terms of value, Hassan Reddick. Yeah. 23-plus sacks the last two years has really found his niche as a pass rusher, but a guy who has versatility can drop back in coverage. $15 million per year for him. It's the opposite of Christian Kirk. I think it's a great value deal for B Philadelphia, and it fills a need. I think B.J. Hill's good value, too. Three years, $30 million. I Me thought too. he was really good. Uh, on that defensive line for the Bengals, especially in the playoffs. Remember in the Super Bowl, the Rams could not run the football, and B.J. Hill is a big reason why. Some more minor deals. Terrence Brooks, uh, Cedric Aboye, uh there in Houston uh, on one-year deals. Devontae Campbell, uh, a sneaky big deal for Green Bay to bring him back. Five years and $50 million. We knew uh, that they would lose some of their guys, Chase, with uh, Aaron Rodgers uh, coming back. But uh, they're able to key, keep a key guy on defense. Yeah, and look, he signed a one-year deal last year after getting off to a tumultuous start in his NFL career. He's named an All-Pro, $10 million per. That's pretty solid for him. Will Disley getting $8 million per year as a tight end, too. Whew. I don't understand that one. That's an overpay, no yeah. doubt. Did your favorite team make a move? Um I think most teams have, but uh, the Chiefs, for example, have not. Cowboys have not. We don't count. 49ers Reese. haven't done jack shit. <laughs> 
type Y for yes, type in for no. It's been busy for some and quiet for others. Some more deals to break down. Mo Alley Cox, uh, who's had quite the journey as a college basketball player. He cashes in three years, $18 million, uh, with Indianapolis as a tight end. Brian Allen Chase, one of my favorite signings. Uh, the Bears would be in play here. He returns to the Rams three years and $24 million. Look, you compare this with the exact same deal that Will Disley got. Oh, Brian Allen is a starting center who's in his mid-20s. That's an exceptional value for the Los Angeles Rams. Yep. Tight end two at the same price tag for Seattle. That's why I don't understand it. Brian Allen is a very good player. Same division, too. Yeah. I do like this. Speaking of the NFC West, Colt McCoy, I think he's a valuable backup. Two years, $7.5 million. Not that much money to shelf out uh, to back up Kyler Murray. Uh, Cardinals also signed Dennis Gardeck, Michael Dogby as well. Uh, Cedric Wilson gets a nice little payday, just over $7 million, uh, to the Miami Dolphins. Three years, twenty-two point eight. Uh, to uh, go to Miami. Teddy Bridgewater, we'll see what the contract looks like, uh, but he's going to back up to a chase, some insurance there. Yep. And then, of course, the big one, J.C. Jackson, five years and $82.5 million. Probably the best available NFL free agent is no longer available. The Los Angeles Chargers continue to take big swings, and I think they're hitting home runs with a lot of these signings. Yep. Love Mike Williams going back to the Chargers. Like J.C. Jackson, not just as a player, a guy who has the most – career interceptions over yeah. the last four years, eight last year and an all pro. Also think he's a good scheme fit. Him and Derwin James in the same secondary, it's pretty Ooh, damn good. Pretty damn good. Uh, help us get to 283,000 subs by the end of the day. It's 515 Central Time uh, as we film this at this exact moment. Uh, so we've got about six and a half, seven hours to get there. 221 subscribers away. We'll be live for day two of free agency, day three, day four, day five. Uh, we'll break down all of the moves, so subscribe. We are your home for NFL free agency. Some more contracts to break down. A lot of these details yet to be uh, official in terms of the uh, years and uh, money. Ben Braden uh, to the Broncos. Coleman Shelton as the Rams bring back another offensive lineman. Uh, Carlton Davis Chase, another big one, three years, $45 million. I think it's a pretty good deal for Tampa. Yeah, so basically on a per-year basis, J.C. Jackson gets about 16 and a half. Carlton Davis is about 15. Yeah. Guaranteed money a little bit different because J.C. gets $20 million the first two years of that deal. Davis is great. I don't think he goes back to Tampa Bay unless Tom Brady comes back. That's the impact of TB12. Another notable move that came down uh, more recently later in the day, Evan Ingram, one year, $9 million to the Jags. It can get up to $10 million with incentives. Uh, you know, Jacksonville's taking some swings here with guys like Christian Kirk, Evan Ingram. Uh, are they overpaying for guys? Yes. But are they helping Trevor Lawrence out? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, maybe it's a win-win. Yeah, and what's the original point that I had made? It's these teams trying to take advantage of young quarterbacks on their rookie contracts and trying to build up their confidence to maximize their abilities. And Evan Ingram has ability, hasn't lived up to being a first-round pick, but he can certainly play big prove-it year for him for the rest of his NFL career. The Bills settle for Tim Settle, two-year <laughs> deal, contract details. Had to do, do it, didn't you? Emerge. Hey, it's just, you know, it was. It's just they, in your blood, brother. Yeah, it's just in my blood, you know. <laughs> that's, what I, uh, that's what I do. So there you go. That's where we sit uh, here at about uh, 515 Central Time on day one of free agency. More deals to come as uh, more deals are announced. What is the worst signing been on day one of free agency? I'm going to go Will Disley. Do you agree? Christian Kirk. Oof, man. I Oof. like the player. It's just too much yeah, money. I'm sorry. Much. But Let good him. for you, Kirk, for getting the hey, bag. Hey, shout out to you and your agent. Good work.